Question number 13. Here we have x plus 5 divided by x minus 7 is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so that's a little bit different. We're used to seeing it being greater than or equal to 0. And we actually want a 0 here because it makes everything so much easier. If you're looking at when your, your rational expression is greater than or equal to 0, then you're just looking at when is it positive? When is the rational expression positive? Which we can break down to when is the numerator positive? When is the denominator positive? When is it 0? When is it negative? Okay, so we want it equal to 0 because then we're just looking at the rational expression in terms of being positive or negative, and that's it. Okay, so I want to get rid of this 1, so I'm going to subtract 1 from the right-hand side, and if anything I do to the right-hand side, I have to do the left-hand side, so I'm going to subtract 1 from this whole thing. Okay, so I get x plus 5 divided by x minus 7 minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, but now, by introducing that negative 1, I have two terms here, so I don't have a nice rational expression. I just want to have the one term. It makes everything a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a common denominator of x minus 7, right? So I'm going to write this 1 as x minus 7 over x minus 7, okay? And then I'm going to put everything together. So I'm going to add the tops and keep the bottoms. So I have x plus 5 added to negative x minus 7, or x plus 5 take away x minus 7. Think of it that way. All right, so I'm going to subtract the tops, keep the bottoms, if you like. All right, so I have x plus 5 minus x minus 7. The negative is going to come in, change the x to a negative, change the 7 to a positive. And then I'm going to add my like terms. But look what happens when I do. The x and the minus x cancel and become 0. And we're left with 12 on the top. Okay, and you might think this is a bad thing, but it's a good thing. It makes everything so much easier. Okay, so instead of having, you know, two expressions where we have to find, you know, like, when does it change from negative to positive, we're just looking at the one expression, the denominator is going to change, okay, because a 12 is always 12, it's always positive, okay, so we don't have it changing back and forth from a negative to a positive or to undefined. All right, so we're really just interested in the x minus 7. When does this change sign, okay? So or when is it equal to 0? What's the important point? So it changes sign when it's equal to 0. So we set it equal to 0 when we solve for x. Well, it changes sign when x is equal to 7. All right, so that's our important, our important pivotal point. So we only have the one important point. And that breaks a number line down instead of to five regions into three regions, okay? The area is less than seven, equal to seven, and greater than seven. So we're gonna build our chart based on that, okay? So we're gonna look at the values of x. We're gonna look at uh, the numerator, which is 12, which is always positive, and the denominator, which is x minus seven, and then we're gonna look at the whole thing, okay? Which is now 12 over x minus seven. So the values of x when x is less than seven, okay? Is which I colored pink up here, so this is all pink. When x is equal to 7, which I colored yellow, so this is all yellow. And x is le greater than 7. I colored the green over here, and this is going to be all green down here. Okay? So when x is 12, sorry, when x is less than 7, what's the value of 12? Well, it's still 12. It's positive, right? What about when x is equal to positive? x at 12 is always positive, so it's just positive down the road. All right. Then we have when x is x minus 7. What's the value of x minus 7? Is it positive or negative when x is less than 7? Well, when, it's less than se when x is less than 7, this is going to be negative. Like, just pick anything less than 7, like, you know, negative 8. Negative 8 minus 7 is negative 15, so it's negative. When x is equal to 7, you get 0, okay? When x is greater than 7, like, if you take 8, you have 8 minus 7 is 1, which is positive, okay? So we have negative, 0, and positive. All right, so we're going to do 12 divided by the x minus 7. All right, so... If we're talking about x is less than 7, you're talking about positive divided by negative, which is negative. Here we're talking about positive divided by 0, which is undefined. Okay? Division by 0 is undefined. And then, when x is greater than 7, you have a positive divided by a positive, which is positive. All right, which is what we're really after. Okay, so I'm just going to put this on the number line up here. Okay, we have negative, undefined, and positive. So when is this expression positive? When is it greater than or equal to 0? Well, here. Okay, it's never equal to 0, but it's always positive when x is greater than 7, and that's your answer, okay? So it's positive right here. So we're going to say um, this expression is positive when x is a member of 7, but 7 is not included because that 7 is undefined, all the way up to negative infinity and beyond, okay? So remember, infinity is the concept of ever expanding numbers. You don't really reach it. It's not a number, okay? So either you, you don't put a, a bracket here at the end or you put a rejecto bracket because you can't really hem infinity in. Okay, and that's it, and that's your answer, and that's how you do question 13 and questions like question 13. Have a good day.